In this video, we're going to dive into talking about the particular building blocks, which are the actual elements that make up Lewis structures. We're going to start seeing practical examples of the organic elements, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, within particular building blocks and within Lewis structures. And we're going to go two ways. So I'm going to start with the generalized building blocks and show you how the particulars arise from those. But then we're also going to look at specific Lewis structures and pull out the building blocks and see what the corresponding generalized building blocks are. The goal there, again, is to train your pattern recognition apparatus to recognize similar particular building blocks and to see when two particulars have the same generalized building block in common. In the next couple of videos, we'll talk about how the similarities in generalized building blocks can get us thinking about similarities in both structure and reactivity. Let's begin with going from a generalized building block to a particular example. And this involves basically a two-step process. So first we'll begin with a given general building block. And let's start with our old friend, two single bonds and a double bond about the central atom. The next step, then, is to place an atom at the center. Let's choose nitrogen for interesting reasons that will become clear when we reach the end of this process. If necessary, or if we desire, we can replace one of the single bonds with a lone pair, but we have to leave the double and triple bonds alone. At this point, let's just say that there are two atoms associated with these two single bonds, and so they remain single bonds. And then the final step, or step two, is to establish the formal charge on the central atom. Once we've done that, we've arrived at a particular building block. The formal charge on this nitrogen atom, well, we can see that there are four electrons associated with it, four valence electrons. It normally has five, and so the formal charge on that nitrogen is positive one, which we can indicate with a plus and a circle around it. And now we've arrived at a particular building block that is an instance, we might say, of the general building block that we started with. And this particular involves nitrogen at its center, has a formal charge of positive one, and this is the kind of thing that we might see within a Lewis structure. In fact, this particular building block is actually a key element of the iminium ion functional group, which is a common functional group in organic chemistry that we'll encounter later. So this is the process of moving from the general to the particular. And in truth, it's more of an academically interesting exercise than anything. More commonly, what you'll have to do is move from a particular building block that you see within a Lewis structure to a generalized building block. So let's do that now. I'm going to draw for us here a quick and dirty example of a Lewis structure. This is protonated acetone. And we're going to focus on the oxygen atom. And so when you're moving from the particular to the general, of course, the first step is to pick an atom to focus on. We're going to choose the oxygen atom for reasons that will, again, become clear shortly. And to move from the particular to the general, the first thing is just to isolate the building block itself. This is kind of the reverse of the second step. We're going to forget about the formal charge and just draw the bonds and lone pairs around that guy. We can forget about the hydrogen atom and just abbreviate it as A, and now we're at a particular building block just missing the formal charge. The next thing to do is to abstract away any atoms that are not the central atom and to convert any lone pairs just back to lines to indicate that either a single bond or a lone pair can sit there. And I'll leave the oxygen atom there temporarily. And then the very final step is just to abstract out that central atom and replace it with a generalized atom X. The thing to notice here is that the generalized building block that we arrived at from the oxygen of protonated acetone is the same generalized building block that we arrived at 
moving from our old friend, the double bond with two single bonds, to the aminium ion. And so these two structures, protonated acetone and the aminium ion, share the common feature of this same building block on their heteroatom, the nitrogen and the oxygen. This is an interesting result that tells us that an aminium ion, which in practice might look something like this, and protonated acetone can behave in the same way. For instance, one example of reactivity that's common to both the aminium ion and to the protonated carbonyl in general is addition of a nucleophile to the carbon of each. The curved arrows, the electron flow, and the resulting products are all analogous. The similar behavior comes from the identical generalized building blocks shared by these. And so begin training, again, your pattern recognition apparatus to recognize particular building blocks and be able to pull out their generalized forms and begin to see when the same generalized form is shared by multiple particular building blocks that might otherwise look completely different.